Welcome back to Hoochos. Today on Hoochos, we're gonna build this. This is a round pipe hydroponic rain gutter grow system with 3D printable end caps and hooch adapters that you can print yourself at home. Let's get to making it. But first, I'm gonna need to move the existing rain gutter grow systems and hooch buckets and I'm going to line them up in the greenhouse so that I can make the most of the space. So I was going to originally do a central line. However, if I do uh, two lines of uh, the hooch buckets, rain gutter grow systems, uh, I'll get more plants per square meter. So I'll get rid of this and then we can start setting up our round pipe system. So just if you're interested, these uh, hold about 15 litres of uh, nutrient solution. All right, now I've moved the old RGGS system, we can start leveling out the base for this system. Now, if you've got a concrete, you know, area that you can just lay this pipe down, generally concrete's pretty level. So you won't need to set up uh, cinder blocks and three meter planks like I am. But this greenhouse isn't level. So I'm gonna have to level out the pipe uh, before I go installing all of the bits and pieces. So let's do that. All right, so that's looking pretty good. It's nice and level. We've got a good base to start building our rain gutter grow system. So now I'm gonna set up the pipe and I'll show you the end caps that I've designed for this system uh, with 3D CAD that you can actually print at home. All of the designs will be available through my Patreon. So if you're interested, just jump over to the Patreon and you can download them and print them. You can also make this rain gutter grow system with just your standard end caps that go with the size pipe that you're using and then just drill holes out and plug them on the ends. The reason I've designed new ones is to eliminate the cost of those end caps and other bits and pieces as well as to kind of customize the system as you'll see in a second. Okay, so these are the two new end caps that I've designed for this system. Now, one of them holds in your float valve, so it just raises the level of the float valve so that it, you can get that full height of water that you want within the system. And this one is your opposite end and your drain end. Now, I've printed threads into this. Uh, there'll be a couple of versions of this available. There'll be one where you can just screw in a hose fitting like this. So you can have whatever hose fittings you like on the end of it, or you can just push in a 13 millimeter barb tap for your drain pipe. Uh, this will also have a plug available to print as well. I'm just working my head around uh, the thread printing process. I'm just working around the tolerances that I need to create in the process of making threads with 3D printers and whatnot. So there will be more complicated threaded designs coming up uh, with, well, you can see there that the thread on this is just too small for the print. So I'm going to perfect that and then I'll have them up for you to download as well. So for the time being, I've just screwed in some garden hose and that has gone into the threaded part of the end and I'm going to use the tap just like this and that's how I'm going to drain the system. These will just fit onto the end of the system. Like so. And then you can just silicon them in. Now, the reason I've put this flat part on the bottom is so that the pipe will no longer roll. The Dutch buckets are just watering. So this will help to stabilize this pipe and stop it from rolling. Even though once the round pipe hooch adapters, which we're going to install on the top of this are in, it won't roll at all. And at this end, this will just slide on once we've made the cuts that we need to, to allow the float valve to raise and lower. 
Before we go putting our holes in our pipe, we're gonna make up our buckets, our wicking buckets, our hooch adapter buckets uh, that we're going to use for this system. I've got a ton of these 20 litre buckets left over from previous system builds uh, and they've got holes in them and such. So um, I'm just gonna use those. There is a downside to this as uh, with the hooch adapter fitting onto this, there is a lip on the bottom of the bucket. All I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take that lip off uh, with a multi-tool. However, if you've just got a flat bottom bucket, these work perfectly. I'm just using these because I already have them. They work really well with a standard pot, so you could just use a normal pot. All right, so to install it, I'm just gonna drill a hole in the bottom of the bucket that correlates to the size of the hole on the hooch adapter. Uh, this is a two inch or 51 millimeter hole saw. And that will just fit over there. And you've got your wicking hole. So I'm now just going to bond the bottom of the bucket to the hooch adapter. Uh, this is tech grip and it will bond the two plastics together. Uh, you could just use Gorilla Grip if that's what you've got available to you. All right, I'm just gonna put that aside and weigh it down. And I can do it with the rest of them. All right, so while I'm waiting for those uh, hooch adapters and buckets to dry, I'm gonna mark out the spacings for the system. Now, because the buckets are quite large, I'm going to space them every 400 across. This is a bit wider than the spacing on my Dutch bucket tomatoes. And the reason I'm doing that is because I actually don't think I put enough space between my Dutch bucket tomatoes. So I'm giving these guys a little bit more space uh, just so that they can collect as much light as possible and I'm not crowding them in. So now I'm gonna go along and mark out the spacing starting 200 mil in and marking every 400 and then we can drill them out. While I'm marking this out, I'm also gonna mark out uh, where I need to put in the holes for my float valve. So, here. So one thing that I've learned from this system is that I really don't want to make these holes too tight because you can just shear off uh, the roots of the plants when you're removing them. And it's got to the point where I won't remove these plants um, because there's so many roots coming out and the tolerance on the hole compared to the uh, actual cup that's going into it is so tight that uh, it will just take all the roots off. So I'm gonna make the holes on this new system a lot larger than the uh, 50 millimeter net cup. So we're gonna step up to a 64 millimeter hole saw, I'm pretty sure. So let's see what that looks like. So this is a 64 millimeter hole saw. And as you can see, it's gonna give us a lot more wiggle room around the pots uh, than this 51 millimeter hole saw, which I've been using currently. Uh, and that's gonna allow us um, to hopefully safely remove the pots if you wanna move them around without damaging the roots too much. So let's drill the holes. So to drill this end out, I'm just gonna drill two holes and then I can connect the holes with a multi-tool. Not the straightest holes. Look at that. Not exactly the plan, but uh, it works nonetheless. Okay, now all our holes are drilled. I'm just gonna seal up the ends so that we can leave them to cure overnight uh, with a non-toxic silicon sealant. I'll put a bead around the internal edge of this uh, where it's going to touch the PVC pipe. And we'll do the same on this side. I'm just gonna install this tap first. I might install a little bit of pipe as well. Very good. So I've got a couple of odd white hooch adapters and I'm going to pair them up with these 10 litre buckets uh, because 
I don't think we'll need a 20 litre pail uh, for a tomato in hydroponics. So I'm going to do an experiment within an experiment and we'll see how the tomatoes that are put in these 10 litre buckets go, whether we have any negative effects from lesser media. So uh, I'll make these up now. Okay, so it's the next day and the glue's had time to cure. Uh, now we can just take uh, our weight off the top of our containers and we're left with a container with the hooch adapter on the bottom. So with my containers, because they've got this lip, uh, you probably won't have to do this if you choose the right container, uh, I'll have to cut this lip off uh, because when I place it uh, over the pipe, the lip stops the bucket from uh, reaching down and resting on the hooch adapter. Now I could have made the print thicker, but I didn't want to make it thicker uh, because not all people will have this lip and it will just waste print filament for everyone. So I'm now going to cut the lip off and then we can place it on our channel. Now I did notice that a lot of uh, 20 litre or 10 litre buckets have this lip. So if you are gonna do this, just use a multi-tool. It's really simple to do. All I'm gonna do is run the multi-tool uh, straight in and then down on each side to meet up and cut that section out. So just go as close to the bottom of the bucket as you can and then meet it with an angle. Like that. And now our bucket will just fit straight over the top and won't move. So that's being completely supported from the bottom and not by the pipe itself. And as you can see on the inside of the bucket, uh, we've got our net cup. This is where the bucket will wick from. Okay, so I'm now going to attach a float valve to our 3D printed end cap. Uh, this is the part that actually feeds the system. When the water level drops, this float valve will kick in and refill the system with nutrients and water from the gravity feed tank, which I'll have outside of the greenhouse. So I'll just attach that in here. Might have to do it like this, like so. And then we can adjust the float valve to about the level where you want the water. So this is about right actually for me. So I'm going to leave it pretty much there. But to adjust the level of the water, you just undo the float valve and you can move it up and down like so. To the end of the float valve, I'm gonna add in a 13 millimeter barbed piece, which has an identical thread to the float valve itself. I'm just gonna put some plumber's tape onto the float valve so that we get a nice seal um, that's watertight when we do up our 13 millimeter piece. Okay, so all the buckets are now glued to the bases and I've set up the reservoir for this and the other rain gutter grow systems, which is this 1000 liter IBC tank. In this tank, I'm just going to mix up the full strength nutrient. So one gram per liter of the diamond tea and one gram per liter of the nitro cal, the Campbell's mix. So now we can just let it fill, check the water level and make sure there's no leaks. For the mix that we're going to put in the buckets, I'm going to use a 60-40 cocoa perlite mix. Uh, the cocoa is a premium hydroponic grade, which has been washed of mineral salts. It is slightly enriched with calcium and magnesium. This is one of my favorite cocos to use. This is a pine grow, it's available from Bunnings, but there is also canna cocoa. And this is the canna cocoa um, that you probably find at your local hydroponics store. It's also a premium grade of hydroponic cocoa that's been washed of salts. And all your hydroponic shops will carry cocoa that is suitable for hydroponics. And this is really hard to get a hold of at Bunnings. Some Bunnings don't stock it. Just visit your local hydroponics shop. Um, they're really helpful and they should be able to send you in the right direction for your hydroponic cocoa. Perlite, on the other hand, is probably cheaper to get from your nursery supply stores because you can get uh, about 100 litres of perlite for uh, next to nothing, like 30 bucks Australian, I think it is. So we're gonna mix this up, put it in our buckets, and then place our buckets in our system. Once it's mixed in, 
we can just add it into our bucket. So uh, just make sure that when you put it in, you fill that net cup up and get it right down to the bottom of the net cup so that that wicking can occur up through the net cup and into the container. And we'll fill the buckets right to the top. Any amount that you don't fill them is just wasted pot essentially. You want the roots to be able to completely fill that pot. Fill right to the top with media. And I'll just fill up the rest. So the water level's looking good. You can see as we come along the channel, we're getting pretty much a uniform depth of water um, all the way until the end. Okay, so to start with, I'm just gonna wash these through with water until they're draining and I've washed out any of the excess um, really fine cocoa that would otherwise get into the system. And then I'm gonna put a watering can of nutrient into each one, 10 liters of nutrient into each one. And that will just charge the CEC of the cocoa, which is the cation exchange capacity. Um, essentially, it'll allow the cocoa to suck up those nutrients and be ready for the plants as they require it. We can now plant into the buckets. Uh, these are just clone tomatoes that I've taken from uh, some out of the rain gutter grow system with the citrus in it and some from the Dutch buckets. I've got another propagation tray full of clones in the greenhouse as well. Uh, so I'm just going to take our clone, which I've propagated in our how to make uh, Rockwell grow cube, grow cubes that I cut up from the larger slab. And you can see We've got full root penetration and uh, really nice, healthy roots. So I'm just gonna push the cocoa to the side. Uh, it doesn't matter how far up the stem on the tomatoes you plant because they'll make roots all the way up the stem. Um, so we'll just place, place them in the hole and fill around. Now I'll remove the bottom leaves in a couple of days once it's established, just to prevent them uh, getting any fungal diseases from coming in contact or being close to the wet growing media. And again. Okay, so the pipe's full and I did find a leak. It was around the hose coming out of this pipe end and I've fixed it now with a bit of silicon, or I mean a lot of silicon. <laughs> but this is one, this is the thing I've been working on. And I've actually fixed the thread for a bung that goes in there. So this is the updated design, and I've managed to figure out how to make threads on 3D CAD, so go me. Uh, but yeah, it just screws into the end pipe, and obviously you'd put some plumber's tape around this, and that would seal up that end nicely. Now you really need to get your print settings perfect for these end caps so that there's absolutely no gaps in the 3D print. So you wanna level your bed really well. Uh, I'm using a 0.8 millimeter uh, extruder, which just reduces the amount of lines by half, which will reduce the likelihood of a gap by half as well, as compared to a 0.4 millimeter extruder. Um, and it gives a really nice, strong, print and this is all pet g as well so just print off the new one and you won't have that problem the 100 millimeter pipe is completely full now at full capacity theoretically 100 millimeters times six meters is a 46 liter capacity um, obviously it's not going to be at full capacity because there is a gap at the top where you lower the water level so that it doesn't overflow out of these holes so i'd estimate that's about 40 liters within this pipe. I'll take you along and show you the water level. So the water level for all the holes looks about like this. So you can see at each end, it will be almost identical. And that's if you've got your level right. You may have to play around with your level a little bit to get this perfect. Um, luckily, I did it right the first time, uh, which almost never happens. <laughs> So I'll just quickly explain how this system works for those that are unfamiliar with the system. So once you've got your plants and your cocoa and your perlite in your bucket, you will then place your bucket over the top of the system. And at the bottom, 
we've got our net cup, uh, which will allow the nutrient solution to wick up from the reservoir below through the cocoa perlite medium and into our growing media. As the plants transpire the nutrient and water within the media, it will continue to wick up from the reservoir below, at which point the reservoir's nutrient level will drop. This float valve will kick in and replenish the nutrient that's taken by the plants from this 1000 litre IBC reservoir. In that reservoir, I'll have my pre-mixed nutrient solution and that will continue to feed the plants as long as I keep that reservoir topped up. Okay, now that I'm happy that the system doesn't have any leaks and that the water level's at the correct height, I can add my plants into the system. And no, I'm not sponsored by Bunnings, but if any of Bunnings marketing team is watching, I'd be very interested. <laughs> So I haven't completely filled the system today. I've run out of perlite and I'm gonna make up some more pots. Let's put on a time-lapse camera and we'll see how these guys respond to the system. It's a couple of days later and the tomatoes are doing really well. You can see in the time-lapse that they're responding really well to the system. Uh, they're moving around at night looking for the sun which means that they're growing as far as I'm concerned. This is fantastic news as I, I left them in the Rockwell cubes probably a bit longer than I wanted to, but now I can just go along and fill up the rest of the spots in the system with the rest of my clones, which I've also left too long in their Rockwell starter cubes. And I've also prepared some more pots. So I'm gonna go do that. Check out my update videos if you're watching this a little while after it was made. And if you're watching at release, Make sure you hit subscribe and like the video so you'll be updated when I inevitably put out videos on this system. Now, as for cost of these adapters, I'm getting my Pet G at its lowest cost at $15 a kilo. Uh, these adapters will take about 250 grams of filament. So they cost about $3.50 an adapter. It's about the same cost as an external wooden enclosure uh, if you had all the tools already. But if you only have a 3D printer and love messing around with 3D printing, they're not actually that expensive to print, so long as you can get reasonably priced filament. The end caps only take about 80 grams of filament at about 40% infill because I wanted them to be slightly structural. And trust me, when you print this many 3D printable objects, you get really good at 3D printing. So it gives you a lot of practice with your 3D printer and there's nothing like honing a skill. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Huchos. I hope you enjoyed the designs that I created for this system. I really enjoyed making it. I've got a few extra buckets to put into the system. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see other than tomatoes in one of these rain gutter grow systems. And that's it. Happy hydroponicking, and I'll see you next time on Hoochos. <laughs>